up guys welcome back today we're going to splurge a little bit and treat ourselves to some king crab legs not one but two different ways but before we do that please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel make sure to hit that bell to enable notifications as well all right let's get this party started with a nice dipping sauce for our fried king crab legs here we're going to make a spicy garlic aioli grab yourself a medium sized mixing bowl and some duke's mayonnaise or whatever mayonnaise you prefer Going into the mixing bowl with a half cup of mayonnaise, a tablespoon of ketchup, one teaspoon of lemon juice, a teaspoon of garlic paste. You can use fresh or minced garlic for this. Next, we're going in with your favorite hot sauce, about a teaspoon or so, depending on how spicy you want this to be. Then we're gonna hit it with a little smoked paprika. And then of course, some of this delicious juicy crab seasoning that happens to be our sponsor today. You can grab yours via the link in my description box. I've also provided a discount code in there for you as well. Next, we're going in with just a little bit of all purpose seasoning, which is a blend of salt, pepper, garlic, and onion powder, and a pinch of white sugar to balance the acidity. Break out the whisk and mix to combine until all those delicious flavors come together like we're about to do for Thanksgiving. Then you can pop that in the refrigerator until we need it later. And now, my friends, it's time to move on to the star of the show. Now, listen, I know these things are super expensive right now. And honestly, if it wasn't for Juicy Crab, I probably wouldn't be eating them right now either. I got to get a few more YouTube subscribers before I can afford to eat King Crab Legs every day. But listen, if you're in the mood to treat yourself, this is the recipe you need to try. These King Crabs are absolutely delicious. I'm going to show you guys how to fry them and how we're going to broil them. And lucky for us, these bad boys come pre-cracked right from the grocery store, which makes the prep work a whole lot easier. I got these from Wegmans, but you can check your local grocery store to see what you can find. All you need is a nice sharp pair of kitchen scissors to get this prep work done. So what I like to do is remove the claws first and then we're gonna work on these legs. I take my kitchen scissors and cut down one side and I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side and remove the top of the shell so that the meat is exposed and has like a little sleeping bag that it can lay in and absorb all the delicious butter and seasoning that we're gonna drop on it here in just a second. So you just wanna repeat that process for all of your crab legs. Again, you wanna remove the top layer of the shell exposing the crab meat so that it can really absorb all the butter and flavor that we're gonna add here in just a few minutes. This technique makes it a whole lot easier to remove the crab meat from the shell as well for the frying preparation. You want nice large pieces of crab meat when you fry these, and it can be pretty difficult to accomplish that when you're using a more traditional method. So break out the kitchen scissors and try it this way. As always guys, the specific measurements and ingredients for both of these recipes are provided for you in the description box below, so don't forget to check that out. And just look at all this fantastic crab meat. This is what you're paying the money for guys. Like I said, I know these are expensive, but sometimes when I buy snow crab legs from the grocery store for $14.99 a pound, I get them home, I crack them open, and there's just no meat in the shell. These king crab legs, you're going to at least get some protein out of the deal. And we're not letting any money go to waste. We're keeping all of these shells, throw them in a Ziploc bag and pop them in the freezer. You can break them out and make a hell of a seafood stock one day when you want to make some gumbo or a shrimp and grits, something like that. And now what I'm doing, guys, is separating the meat that I'm going to use for the deep fried crab legs by removing the meat from the shell and placing it in a bowl that we're going to cover in some buttermilk here in just a second. And then for the broil method, we're going to leave the meat in a half shell and place it in a casserole dish like you see here say it with me guys looking good we're gonna whip up a nice garlic and herb butter to go on top of these before they go under the broiler but before we do that we still have a little bit of prep work to do we're gonna go ahead and get our breading station ready so in a mixing bowl you want to add one cup of yellow cornmeal and one cup of all-purpose flour the cornmeal is gonna bring a little color and texture to the party and I just like this blend for most of my seafood that I'm frying so get in there with a fork give that a good mix and then we're gonna season this up going in with some of my all-purpose seasoning which is a blend of salt pepper garlic and onion powder if you guys haven't tried that yet you can get yours via the link in my description box there's a discount code for you there as well really you can use whatever seasoning you like on your seafood but i do recommend to keep it simple because it's already kind of blasphemy to deep fry these king crab legs anyway so we've seasoned the flour that we're going to use to deep fry these crab legs now we're going to season the actual crab meat with some of this juicy crab seasoning so just apply a nice light coat onto the crab meat and then we're going to cover that in about a quart of buttermilk. The buttermilk is going to help the flour really stick to the crab meat and remain nice and crispy when it goes into our oil. So once you've done that, go ahead and pop that in the refrigerator for about 15 minutes and then we're going to move on to this garlic butter. For the garlic butter, we're going to heat a small saucepan over medium heat, add one stick of butter, and then we're going in with one to two teaspoons of garlic, depending on how much garlic you like. And then we're going in with one tablespoon of juicy crab seasoning or whatever your favorite seafood seasoning is. 
followed by about a half teaspoon of lemon zest and lemon juice. That's gonna brighten things up a little bit. And really lemon just pairs beautifully with seafood in general. So give that a good mix. We're going in with a couple tablespoons of fresh chopped parsley, mostly for color, but it also adds a little bit of herb flavor as well. So break out the whisk, mix to combine. We're just looking for that butter to melt a little bit here. You can taste this as you go and adjust the flavor if you want. If you wanna spice this up a little bit, you can go in with some cayenne or red pepper flakes. Once the butter is fully melted, we're going to take a nice sized spoon and kind of ladle this sauce right on top of the exposed crab meat there. Tons of flavor in this garlic butter. That's going to go under the broiler for just about five minutes. It really doesn't take long for this to cook at all. Brace yourself for a trademark money shot. Definitely got a little bit of food porn going in this episode. Sorry in advance. Oh man, tell me that doesn't look good. I'd eat it just like that. And technically you could because the crab meat's already cooked, but we're definitely going to pop this under the broiler for just a couple minutes. Now that we got that out of the way, it's time to fry up some king crab. So we're going right from that buttermilk directly into the seasoned flour and cornmeal. Get in there with your hands, make sure that the crab legs are well coated in that flour with no bald spots. Then we're gonna place it on a plate to hang out for about 10 minutes while we let our oil come up to temperature. This allows time for the flour to really adhere to the crab meat. That'll ensure that you have a nice crispy end product and that none of your flour ends up at the bottom of your fryer burning up. And speaking of the fryer, we're gonna add about two liters of cooking oil to that frying pan. We're gonna get that up to 350 degrees. Once it gets up to 350 degrees, we're gonna gently place those breaded crab legs right into the oil. These cook up super quick, guys. As soon as they turn golden brown, we're ready to pull them out really about three or four minutes at most. So get in there with your tongs occasionally, move them around just to make sure they're not sticking to the bottom of the fryer because if they do, they'll burn. You also don't want them to stick together. So just get in there make sure that they're playing nice. And after a few minutes, we'll be able to remove them and place them on a wire rack to drain. You wanna give them a little flip every so often. Oh man, that looks good. All right, so once they're done, we're gonna place them on that wire rack to allow them to drain. I prefer this method rather than the paper towel method because the paper towel absorbs all that oil and gets soggy. And once the paper towel gets soggy, your crab legs will get soggy as well. And we didn't spend all this money to have soggy crab legs. All right, people, it is time to plate this up. A couple quick money shots of the broiled crab legs. And then I'm gonna plate these up with two dipping sauces, a little lemon garnish. You guys let me know in the comments which one of these you wanna try first. Going down with a little fresh chopped parsley for a pop of color, and I have got to get in here and get a taste test. Again, special shout out to Juicy Crab for the sponsor. Make sure you guys check out their season, and it is phenomenal. All right, let's go in here for a taste test, guys. See what we got. I'm going for the fried crab legs first. Let's break that in half. Go right into that aioli that we made earlier. And oh, man, that is money. I know some people will say you shouldn't fry crab legs but those people probably haven't tried fried crab legs. Definitely give it a try. Now we're going for the tried and true method with the garlic butter. And that is the winner, my friends. Let me know what you think in the comments. Give your boy a thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell to enable notifications. And as always, thank you for your support.